Welcome to the latest this week's ACA podcast sponsored by Skybet ACA Freeze. Tom, Jimmy, Jake and Joe with you as ever to run through the schedule. Coming up on this show then, we build a five-fold floating around the 12-1 to marker. A stupid 11-1 to shout that you can consider. Have a guess who that's from. And we also find out what Jimmy does on a Wednesday afternoon as well. As ever, let us know your thoughts in the comments all through Sports and Life Football social media channels. And remember to keep it fun. Never bet more, more than you can afford. This podcast is 18+. plus. Please gamble responsibly. So after a few tricky weeks, I think it's fair to say, last week's ACA, four out of five, one defeat. At least we knew when they scored late it wasn't going to happen. So close, but so far it looked so optimistic at one point. Yeah, it was it, it was looking, it was going too well, wasn't it? Let's be honest. And then I clicked on the stats on Sporting Life for the game, the Crawley v Salford game. And they were getting absolutely hammered. Good work on plugging the new yeah. stats hub that's You're coming on Sport Live you know as well. You're good. So, you know, that, that's basically, that saved us a job. I'll just tick off the podcast yeah. uh, notes. But no, I, I got a message yeah. at 2.43 <laughs> from our very own Joe Townsend. Messaging each other. Yeah. I was I was working. I was just, just getting stuff around. Right site. Included. And he messaged me and said, obviously, hope I'm wrong, dot, dot, dot. Feeling really bad about Crawley since yesterday. And I said, why is that? He said, I heard Carl Robinson on Five Live this morning and he made me think Salford are definitely getting a result. Yeah. It's, you know, it's about three days too late, that, Joe. Um, no. I did start... I, I got a message from Michael Beardmore as well during the game saying, not sure about Crawley here. And um, oh man, it was just listening. I, I heard Carl Robinson on Five Live on the Saturday morning and he'd managed to not get banned from the touchline and taking a big fine instead. And it was just the new manager thing. He sounded really optimistic, talking about the what he'd managed to implement in training. I thought, this is doing, is it? Mm. What did you do yeah, instead? Go on, us. So tell the listeners. I swapped it out for Blackpool in my own hacker. Boo. I back both. I back both, but which I, is how I would advise um, all of you beautiful listeners. What we say is not gospel. I mean, do maybe back ours as well, but... If you've got like your own little fancies, then uh, yeah, then go for it. Or as Brian Stalker, I hope he's not a real stalker. <laughs> I'm one two two tells us on YouTube. Crawley for fuck's sake. Rest of the picks were great as well. Unlucky guys. Or Crawley, which I I don't know who whose pick Crawley was, but um, we got some real funny uh, feedback um, on our YouTube channel about uh, Tom. If it's not going in under Tom's guidance, uh, then no point you lads mentioning anything else. Uh, bring bring better notes. That's all I'll say on that one. Um, yeah, it was, but Tom over there. To be fair, though, it was just, I think we all had, uh, before him going, oh, we're struggling with this. And so I've got quite a few home team fancies this week that I like. So I was just kind of let to go off on my own little world. So equally, I'm blaming you guys for letting me off and just waffling away. And... Keep that head of yours up. Don't you dare apologise for you, these mate. two. Thanks sorry for, sorry for having too much these knowledge two. and too much notes. Thanks for that. Throwing in on this. Oh, it's, just a... An, it's just an automatic flex. It's usually these two. Sorry. The, him. The, no. <laughs> Good. Joseph. Do do keep your comments coming in, everyone. Even ones like Squidded1000. Come on, boys. You need to pull your fingers out. These picks are terrible. Pick your hacker, but whoever on the panel for that show, pick your best banker home team, best banker away team. Some of yous talk some shite. Yeah, I've got an absolute perler from TikTok where Georgie Boy got in at, touch. Looking at Jimmy because I knew he'd pluck something out <laughs> from the internet that I wouldn't have seen. Coincidentally, the, this uh, this fellow who got involved, he's, he's got the same name as our producer, so I don't know if it's an alias. He, he's probably tapping away as we speak, the little keyboard warrior back there. <laughs> but he's, he, Georgie Boy got in touch to say, most clueless podcast ever. How do I stop seeing your videos? And if you want to get more of us and our saturated football opinions, head to Sporting Life FC on TikTok. Look at two plugs we've done. One for the TikTok, they're happy. One for the Stats Hub, the marketing people are happy. That's all done. Plugs out the way. Do you want to talk this week's hacker? Yeah, I'll get straight back on track, Tom, which is George Murray saying, have we seen a BTTS pick yet this season? Well, keep listening because that might come later in the season. And if oh, Jimmy's episode, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. right, okay. research. If, um, if chicken, Jimmy's chicken, chicken coop chicken. isn't called Hen House Muir after this show, yeah. then you're messing up. So we do want suggestions for three chickens it is that we need naming. 
So yeah. there's every chance you're going to get it named if you send a name in because we haven't had one. Uh, shout, who said the Henna House more one? Because that made our WhatsApp. We all applauded it. We yeah, all loved it. George, Muir, George Murray. So. Brilliant, brilliant George. effort. Should we actually talk this week's hacker then? Yeah. We've been waffling on and reflecting a bit too much. If we must. On this week's hacker. Who was it said about the just picking your favourite picks and put them in? Which comment was that again that you said on the back Squid of that? Squid 1000 who said we talk shite. I totally agree with all points on that. That and also the chucking your strongest fancy in. So I want to kick things off this week with the one of a couple of teams that I think if we're not putting them in the ACA this week, what is the point in this? It is Peterborough United to beat Shrewsbury Town. It is a lovely price of 3-10. to 10, And we always debate about that. Oh, is it too short? Is it not? You know, is it going to, you know, is the value there in this? Frankly, I was under the... I thought we went to five teams because we had some success in it earlier in the season. We went, we like this method here of just chucking short price teams in to do well. And I kind of want to go back to that a little bit. Hopefully we're all in agreement on this one. But Peterborough, yeah, straightforward selection for this. I've spoken already about the two sides in recent weeks. Peterborough have been a hot team on this podcast very recently. Hot, hot. I just can't see why we wouldn't, wouldn't include them in this one. Shrewsbury do not travel well. Peterborough are performing well. I went to this game at the New Meadow as well. And it was the correct result and outcome in the end. Please all agree with me so we can have it. No, I, I'm i annoyed because I've just seen what he's pulled up on his laptop. What have I pulled up, Jim? Come on, tell everybody. Data spreadsheets. You are correct. And do you I, know who's top of that data spreadsheet right there for League One? Sure you're going to tell us, aren't you? That is Peterborough. Yeah, I honestly don't need any data on this one for me. It is who's bottom like, on that spreadsheet? That is Shrewsbury. Yeah. I've spoke before about Peter, uh, Shrewsbury's pitch, yada, yada. But Peterborough, when I went to that game, right, Shrewsbury had two chances all game, I can remember. One was the goal, which was a cross that went wrong and went in. It was a bit of a cold day. It was a bit windy as well. Don't know how assisted that was. And then at the very, very end, they hit the crossbar from a set piece. But the centre-back was so close to the goalkeeper, I don't know how he would have got it under the crossbar. That's like the lowest he possibly could have got that. That was their only two chances. Peterborough... Outplayed them all game, effectively on that one. Deservedly got their two goals. Three to ten. This has to be a starting point for the Acker for me. We actually uh, put out on uh, Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it. Twitter, um, always. Heritage. Last week, uh, Peterborough, the best side in League One on Underlying Data. One of yeah. the hottest sides in the country right now, which Jake gave a really good argument uh, for last week. And there was a reply. I could have told you that. Uh, was that was that you? It could have been Tom, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh. Another, another one with an alias. Yeah, let's mm. just uh, anonymous the reply and say someone replied. Mm. Makes a change because we are just getting infiltrated by bots on Twitter most of the time now, which we were discussing off air before, weren't we? It's gone wrong. Yeah. Those it's bloody terrible bots. So I'm happy to wrap up this section. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter in. Yeah. Unanimously. Peter Burr. I thought there was going to be a proper word there rather than simply, mm, but that seems positive. There's to me. some funny faces, though. To me, I think we're all in agreement. This seems like a first pick of the Acker. Happy? Happy? I'm happy. Brilliant. First pick then of this week's Acker, we are taking Peterborough for a home win over Shrewsbury in Skybet League One. During that little break there, Joe turned around and went, it's a bit too short for me. Didn't wait for the defined point in the podcast where he could say this. It, yeah, it, he's in agreement, so it's in. He had a golden opportunity when you said, is everyone uh, everyone happy with this? And he just made this noise, didn't he? Mm. <laughs> anyway, enough of that because they're in now. Um, we are quite happy. We're in. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, was that staged? No. MK Dons at home to Morecambe. Um, not quite as short as Peterborough, but still fairly short price. And Morecambe, away from home, won four, drawn one, lost seven. And interestingly, all four of those wins have come against teams in the bottom five. So basically, they win away against the worst teams and get absolutely pummeled by teams above them. Uh, they rank rock bottom in terms of XG data away from home. And MK Dons are rolling under Mike Williamson. Eight wins, one draw, two defeats in the last 11. At home, they've won five of the last six, drawing the other. I think they should probably be one to two, but we're getting six to ten. Yep, I am with you. MK Dons are soaring. They're flying. You could even say there's not a star in heaven that they can't match. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, just one point on this, one thing to add. Uh, only Wrexham have taken more points than the Don since Mike William took charge in October. Uh, so they are very much the team in, in form. I'm going to plug our TikTok again. Second time. Aren't we good? Uh, MK Don's playoff potential. Do they finish in the top seven? 100%. Now, 100%. We were so hot on them early doors because Graham Alexander... I was going to say serial winner, but his style is basically winning style. It's not effectively pretty. Um, 
pretty bit effective, I should say. Uh, now it's a massive turnaround. They are in a huge opportunity to finish in those playoffs. Now. I think it was as much um, about squad as Graham Alexander. If we went back and it, we were talking about the squad, uh, the squad shouldn't have gone down. They shouldn't have got rid of Liam Manning. If you speak to MK Dons fans, they actually say that they hung on to Liam Manning too long because the season wasn't going the right way. I would still like push back against that and say that he had earned the right for a full season after what he did the season before. But their squad is superb. They've got one of the best young managers. Now, um, it's another tick from me because it's basically one of the best teams in the division against a team that is middling and in terrible form. Uh, and you would think this would be one to two by the off, so we should take it. Anything else? We're happy with that. This seems. I I, oh, I always feel a bit nervous. I know. When, well, it's just boring, isn't it? It's just chucked out, and we go, yeah, yeah. Mm, I like yeah. that. I, I feel it's... I feel more nervous, but I feel actually that's probably the right way to do things because it means that we're all on board straight away. Yeah. Do you want me to put the cat amongst the pigeons? Are you going to say Morecambe? How dare you? <laughs> no, well, we're happy that one's in, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, MK Dons, yeah. MK Dons to beat Morecambe, then. If we're all happy, we will lock that one in. MK Dons to beat Morecambe is our definite second selection. I was going to cut to a little ad break to learn about the Akafries and get our free selections for this week, but I'm intrigued by Jimmy's Cat Amongst the Pigeons, and I kind of want it now. Yeah, I mentioned uh, Borough v Rotherham, and I feel like everyone just assumed I'd be siding with the host, but... Before and this was, by the way, if you're going... When did he say that? This yeah, was when we were just chatting away before. Yeah. Um, talk to us. Rotherham, 12 to 1 in my notes. Obsessed with putting Rotherham I haven't in checked them. I haven't checked them, so they might have... Uh, they probably <laughs> drifted, if anything. Uh, but 12 to 1. 11's yeah. actually now. Oh, they're shortening. They're shortening. Yeah. People are on side. Money's coming. Money's coming. I mean, I'll, I'll, one for an acker. I will say on the odd, odd <laughs> shot, you know, the, oh, outright, this is not going in the acker. Yeah. But I want to hear why. Every, it seems every week Rotherham are, <laughs> every week Rotherham are a big price away from home as you'd expect and every week Jimmy goes yeah maybe <laughs> do I want to know win? why you want Rotherham don't well, look at me it's not me do they ever look at me well uh, you just 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 wait there mister <laughs> I've got the answers right here on a, on a Wednesday actually I'd like to take you back to yesterday before I get in into the nuts and bolts of why this is a brilliant selection I help out at the uh at the horse yard, just something to do. It keeps me off the streets, keeps me out of danger. And there's a technique to get the horse's shit out of the shavings. What you have to do, you have to sort of throw it up the wall. The shavings go to the top of the pile and the poo rolls down the sort of slope of shavings. So you were talking weight yep. based, you know. We were talking it's science, a bit of science it's basically, involved. It's yeah. kind of a bit of physics you're going on here in your day-to-day -day life. <laughs> Are you ready for the zinger? Talking about you, shoveling shit. Are you ready for the zinger? Yeah. So on a Wednesday, you could say I throw shit up the wall. And on a Thursday, I try and make it stick to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm... Oh, was, that's why I'm a, touting... He was, was hoping for a better reaction. Than than you know, any good argument starts well. Then there's a lovely story in the middle and it recaps mm. well. We've started well, I think. We've got a lovely reasoning as to why in the middle. Uh, Do you want the actual... Do you round this off why this is related oh to Rotherham? God. Yeah, they're free, all of their three wins this season have come against top half sides. Um, they've picked up 13 of their 17 points this season against top half sides. There's something about this Miller side where they are just geared to play better when the onus isn't on them. Can I just jump in and caveat? Sorry, can I... They had a different yeah. manager for most of those, and now they're trying to play out from the back. Um, I don't know if anyone saw, was it the FA Cup game, where they tried to play out from the back uh, against yeah. Fulham. Fulham, yeah. And Fulham, they literally, <laughs> they literally took the ball off them in the 18-yard box and scored. Um, I, I, they're trying to play a different style now, and I think Middlesbrough will absolutely have their way with them. I mean, they are mm. two to seven, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Not a bold statement. Yeah, what's well, not? What a hot take that is, Jake. Thank you. Not. Three, and <laughs> three wins three wins this season all at home. No wins away from home. Yeah, that was my Achilles heel. I was hoping everyone I mean, would just fair, ignore that. to be fair, it's not like Jim Rod's come out and gone, oh, it's five to six yeah. each way. They don't I know which way this one's going. You've ship. gone for 11 to one. And we've got a I, nice story about what you do on a Wednesday out of it. So there is some <laughs> positives from this selection. I see your bad away form, and I'll raise you their record against, record against Borough. Irrelevant. Since their return to the relevant two wins, one draw. Historical in that element is completely. I, I've got to disagree. I've got to disagree slightly. Right, we now. need to move on. Rotherham's not going in. But I was there interested to hear why. And I was interested to hear your story. The ones we are definitely including this week, we have agreed on Peter to beat Shrewsbury. We have MK Dons to beat Morecambe for definite as well. 
you could put Rotherham into your accumulator and hope they score first, Aka frees it, and you've got a winning selection there. Here's Joe to tell you how it works. One thing we've all got in common is having that one leg of an Aka let us down. From spending your winnings in your head to cursing that last minute equaliser that broke your heart. But it doesn't have to be that way. Aka Freeze from Skybet gives you the power to freeze a winning score early. Even if that team goes on to lose, Skybet will settle it as a winner. It's time to take action. It's time to Aka Freeze and end the game your way. Visit skybet.com for full terms and conditions. Aka Freeze selections for this week then are what those teams that you think might grab that first goal. Get ahead, you can freeze it. Winning leg, you don't have to worry about it. I've got a feeling I know which one you're going to say. But Jimmy, kick us off. Who's your Akka So intuitive. Team? How how have you cracked that? Yeah, Rotherham. 12, 11 to 1 now at Borough. <sighs> Big price. Joe, we'll chuck to you. Burton to beat Charlton. Nice price at home. Um, improving side against a team in really bad form, but they're the outsiders. I'm going to chuck in Bristol Rovers to beat Blackpool because I think Bristol Rovers have had a bit of success against those possession-based sides. So I'm going to back it to continue here and they get that first goal. Jake, round us off. I'm going to take Plymouth home to Cardiff. Great home form we've discussed Ooh, yeah. all season. And Cardiff have conceded first in eight of the last ten in all competitions. There are Acca Freeze selections then. Back to this week's Acca. Right, lads. Burton to beat Charlton for me. Did anybody watch that game Monday? Burton against Yes, Darby. yes, yes. I was back Burton corners and I was just roaring them all on. They fell one short of what I needed, but... I can see why you potentially can't yeah, I, I like I like what I'm seeing with Burton. So um uptick in form, but uptick in performances as well since uh, Martin Patterson was appointed. Uh I know a little bit more about him because he worked as uh, assistant manager, first team coach last year under Michael Duff, really highly thought of at Barnsley and then obviously they went to Swansea, didn't quite work out, uh, so this is his first managerial role. Um, and he seems to just be trying to to get them to, to play a little bit more football than they were under Dino and um, to come back from 2-0 down away at Derby. Uh, and they even when they were 2-0 down, they weren't playing badly in that game. Um, it's really encouraging signs. Very unlucky to concede a 93rd minute winner. They're playing Charlton, who are in terrible form. I think we probably expected yeah. a lot more from Michael Appleton. Um, started okay, uh, but it was a lot of draws and... It tends to always be the way, not just with a new manager, but any kind of run of form. If you draw loads of matches and you've not lost much, then if you can start winning a few games, it looks like a long unbeaten run and great. You start climbing up the table. But if you lose a few, all of a sudden it's like, well, they've only won one in 10 games. And it feels like that's what's happened at Charlton um, and the pressure is already ratcheting up on him. Um, so is is there yeah. an element of it's still too early with Burton I get that you're kind of jumping on the price right and that, that there's value in going but then like any bet you're gambling a little bit on, on the uncertainty of it I don't know that's my only concern is it too early because there's a few kind of teams that I have an eye on mm. is it a bit that you, we've not fully established what exactly they are yet and it it could be a case of against Derby who are a top team yeah, top, top top team away from home. <laughs> top players that um, you have a set game plan of the way of doing it, and then you necessarily wouldn't play that same way against Charlton at home, where even though you're two to one outside, as you are fancied to win. It's a brilliant point, Tom, and excellently put Thank across. You. <laughs> Basically, I'll just get that tenor that I said. On. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And the thing is with Burton is, I didn't watch the game on Monday. I, I was watching uh, Saltburn. Has anyone watched it? I've not watched uh, it. Put off by... So weird, don't. It's crap. E- this is it. Every it's time crap. you hear Saltburn and you go, okay, every single person says weird. Yeah. It's the first word to no, describe. I, I was told it was weird but brilliant. You won't be able to take your eyes off it. And I was just I was just really bored, not invested. But back to this. Did you watch it or were you playing on your burner during it? Snake. Nothing to play on my burner. Oh, you got Doku. snake on it? No, it's a no, no, I don't have snake on it. Everyone always says, oh, at least you got snake. Well, I don't. You were, you're into Sudoku. Uh, but spoiler alert, Jimmy's got a new phone for Christmas that he's just refusing to use. He Sent it back? Yeah, it could actually go into the 21st century if he wanted. <laughs> uh, what game were we on? You've lost me track. You're going to have to drag me back into Sudoku, Sudoku know level 14 for anyone interested. But I've got really into reading, so Sudoku's took a back burner. 
Back to the game then, what yep. are we on? Brewers, they only had two shots against Derby. Uh, it, two bro. shots on target, sorry. So I didn't watch the game. I can't give any more insight than that, but that strikes me as fortunate. Just feel like I need to acknowledge in case anybody listening can hear the background noise that's going on. There's a bit of building work <laughs> going on next door. Oh, I just side of our control. Ignore that. I just pretend it's not going on I if mean, you can hear it. I just thought it was the producers crying yeah. <laughs> about Burton. The way they've set up there as well. If anybody's seen Dexter, it genuinely looks like they're about to dispose of a dead body. Yeah. Uh, so this is where or they'll ET be E.T. for classic film. Yeah. yeah I'm, you know, I'm where they the capture ET, the, man, the little fella. Yeah. yeah. He's in this little <laughs> testing facility. Little it's fella. basically like that out yeah. there. He's a right little character. Um, yeah, I reckon we're moving past Burton. Seeing oh, as well. One game is not a big enough sample to. Not looking good for me, is it? Um, I had. The, I, oh yeah, I wouldn't even put a pin in it. Oh, maybe back it as a single. Maybe I'm, I'm. I don't know. Yeah, all right. Too much uncertainty. I was. I was fully with you, Joe. There. I'll get record. But I mean, yeah. Can I take us to Walsall at home to Accrington? You're looking about eleven to ten. Um, Walsall. They've come off the back of a couple of away defeats. One in the cup. Um, one against Stockport. But three hot, strong home wins in a row. Uh, before that, they beat Tranmere, who we know are in really good form, under Nigel Atkins. They beat Crewe, and they beat Wrexham as well at home. Um, and interestingly, they've conceded just nine times all season at home, 12 games. It's actually the second best defence at home, uh, going to goals conceded behind just Mansfield. Um, I did speak to Michael Beardmore, who writes at Sporting Life, he's a big Warsaw fan. He's a little bit of, you know, or whenever you ask fans, they're generally quite pessimistic, um, especially when your team's generally lets you down quite often, as I'm used to as a Sheffield Wednesday fan. Hang on, you had best thing since sliced bread the other week. Oh, well, we're still staying up, on, mate. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. Champions League team the next door. Oh, they're letting Champions us down. League's a push. Letting um, us down every week. Yeah, <laughs> he, he basically <laughs> outlined that they've, oh. they've lost the leading goal scorer. Um, Freddie Draper scored 10 times. He's been recalled by Lincoln, but they brought Mo Farlin, who was on loan at Doncaster. He scored seven times in 25 games. Which is not a bad return for a poor Doncaster team. Um, but yeah, he, I was going to say player there. I thought that was really harsh. No, um, but they, they've got. He said they've got decent depth in forward areas. Um, Isaac Hutchinson, obviously in the ten, who's one of the better players um, in that league. And Accrington, listening to some of the post-match press conference from uh, Coleman, they actually fielded their youngest eleven of the season uh, against Gillingham last week due to injuries. So they got ba like not a lot of experience on the pitch. And Sean McConville, he's, he's going to be out for a little while, which is a huge blow for them. Uh, and away from home, they're on a five-match winless streak. They've lost six of their 12 this season. Um, and, you know, they, they 12th best defence according to expected goals when travelling. So the data doesn't stack up to them being a very good travelling team. And I think Walsall are definitely, they've scored a lot of goals recently as well. So I think Walsall's price is a little bit too big. I don't have this, but I know someone else on this test surely will. This has got to be a game where people have looked at I kind of looked at it. I was like, maybe. Even yes. if I have it. Okay. I don't have anything to add. How could you possibly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm losing the will to live then. I'm thinking, like, take a breath. He's going to stop. He's going to stop. Uh, has, anybody seen, has anybody seen Old School where Will Ferrell has to go against the guy from CNN? Um, I don't think I have seen yeah, this one, so but explain he has scene. To, So he has to go up on to, to, uh, to do the debate. And he goes, no, I'll, I'll take this one. And uh, he just speaks for one minute. And then he goes, oh, and sorry, he, I blacked out. He blacks out. And dude. the guy goes up and goes, I got no response. That was perfect. <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much where we are here. I can't add anything there. But Walsall, yes. Where we are in terms of the Acker, for definite, we have Peterborough, we have MK Dons, just to recap that, at even money-ish, the double. Uh, Walsall, we're talking 11 to 10-ish on that one. I have no particular qualms, is the right word? I don't have anything against adding this game to it. If Jimmy wants to be the fourth voice, or are you just going to sit this one out as well? well? I was going to sit this one out. I really wanted to listen to what you were saying, but after a while, I just lost the interest. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the tactic Thanks, just to go, let's go long enough and we'll just go, yeah. yeah. I was thinking the same with the Rotherham people. To be fair, I... Yeah, to be fair, Rotherham one was probably longer and it was never going in. Yeah, but it was, it was, I it talked was about a story that gripped me. Shit for gripped about it. a minute. You were very invested in the science. I mean, compared, compared to Burton and Walsall, I'm far more involved in Walsall. Is this going in? they're going I like it. I'm I'm happy to pin it and have it as like a first reserve because we've got quite a few other stronger fancies, I think, that we might want to get to. But I like it. I think the price is too big. Jimmy? Just give me another game. In, in give me another game. We've talked about this. We've talked about this one. All right, give me another game. Uh, see, the stare, don't stare down the, the viewer. Don't look at them. <laughs> no, you're going to have to throw to somebody else. <laughs> All right, Joe, chuck us another game. I like Wrexham to win at Newport. Talk to me. 
21 to 20. Um, any game, pretty much, where Wrexham are around the even money line, then it like would pique my interest in a coupon. And um, yeah, Wrexham, the I mean, Jimmy's already mentioned the stat about um, MK Dons um, since Mike Willington took over that only Wrexham have taken more points than them. Wrexham are the consistently best team in League Two since that dodgy start where they were conceding loaded goals because Ben Foster was in net. Uh, Newport, uh, just, you know, middling League Two team. Um, personally, I don't read too much into them being too Welsh side, Wrexham and North Wales. Um, their rivalries are with sides on the you other don't side. Read What's your favourite half them? of being Welsh sides? No, do you know, like, they're, they're being... They're both Welsh sides. Being, uh, yeah, being derby. a derby element, I don't I don't see that. What's your favourite side of Wales, North or South? <laughs> you had to saw it in half and just push the other out to see and keep one. Oh, just North, because it's closer. Oh, right. Yeah, I, South I Wales. Trying to, I was oh. trying to trip him up a bit there, really, South, just to mate. get people go, right, get that yeah, man. South, South Wales <laughs> is a long, get him, boys. A long way to go. Wrexham, you proclaimed one of several teams that are the best team we've ever seen in League Two, I'm sure at one point this season. Any opinion on Wrexham Newport? Because I, again, I no issue about this. And if we're comparing those three games we spoke about, if you're allowed one away side, which is always the way I like to do it, uh, Wrexham are a strong contender. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I have some strong opinions on this. You voiced them, away. Voiced them last week. Uh, so for me, I week? think the, the Derby rivalry, North-South, whatever you want to, bottle it as I think that has a massive impact on the result as does Wrexham's away form slap bang average on the road the the points the majority have been won at home as that's where they've been thriving in terms of goals performances and literal results so I I was I was I was more than apprehensive about including Wrexham last week I was proved wrong lol <laughs> but away from home I, I really do not want them near the acre and it's not just a childish because you didn't let me leave them out last week I just don't want them in if they're away from home I've got to agree with Jimmy which I don't no. do very often on this podcast do I buddy um, but yeah the, the away form is, a, is an iconic say. moment <laughs> yeah, get that framed um, 11 goals scored in 12 away games for Wrexham you wouldn't have thought that would you Jesus yeah yeah, that's correct yeah. 3.1 goals per game by earlier support uh, <laughs> yeah so I, I think that there's a better away team on the slate. <sighs> Arby at Lincoln. I knew Derby at Lincoln would come up. Yeah. Uh, I, anyone who watched them on Monday, you might have some doubts about potential defensively, but I think the firepower they've got in, in attack is more than enough to make up for it. And Lincoln are on a miserable run of form. They've drawn two and lost four, the last six in the league. They lost at Pride Park not so long ago. Um, yeah, it's it's been very poor. Um, I think only a late equaliser denied Barnsley um, at Lincoln, didn't it, Joe? When uh, Oxford and Bolton went there and won two, you know, three teams of the top six. Don't know if you've got anything to add, Joe. I know you had this down as a potential. Yeah, I've got Derby down. I like it. Um, the only little blip that they've had uh, in the last, what would it be now, three months, pretty much, like was losing at home to Peterborough in a game that I think everybody knew was going to be a cracking match, could go either way it on was. New Year's Day. Ended up losing 3-2. Um, and similar to a couple of matches that are on the slate this weekend, I would expect this to be more like around the the 1-2 to two marker. Probably not going off that short, but it'll get down towards there. Um, your Derby are, are they out, even outright favourites to win the league now? Uh, in League One. To be fair, they, they, prices, they were so clear favourites yeah. at the start of the season yeah. that never really drifted even when they started poorly. So, um, it's, it's Derby and Bolton, 11-4. to four. Yeah, so I um, I could get on side with this one for sure. I just I got uh, I did a little bit of extra research for this game uh, and it looks like a real set-piece mismatch as well. Derby, League... I'm in. Legal. I'm in. I don't need to hear anymore. Oh. He know, do you know what he's done? He's gone, I oh, know I could get these two. I, can, I know two yeah. of the three. If I use the term set-piece mismatch, yeah. they're going to go, you can have it I'll get Tom with set-pieces. Derby have scored 13 times, which is a league high, uh, and Lincoln have conceded 13, which is a league high. So both is polar opposites in terms of set-pieces. Um, and on Monday, what caught my eye was Derby's right-hand side looked really strong. Um, Kane Wilson, in particular, looked really good down that right side. Some really good crosses into the box. Obviously, Mendes Lang and uh, Barkhausen were switching around. But um, when looking back at some of Lincoln's uh, matches against Bolton and, New- and Northampton, uh, they looked really vulnerable down their left. Northampton scored both their goals down the left-hand side in that 2-1 win. And Bolton created a lot of chances down there as well. So I think that could be an interesting angle um, to, to take advantage of. I've, I've 
I feel like I've been won over more and more by the more we talk about Derby. The only thing I could kind of note with Lincoln was since Scoob has come in, attacking wise, they've just looked flat. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the big thing that that kind of I know we're in the January window, things can change, but that would be the one thing for me on Lincoln. Um, Jimmy's got a little smirk. Jamin, I've been work. I've been I've been one. I was never against it, but I really feel like I've been one around this on what would be with Peter and MK Dons if we had a derby. We're talking around a five to two ish treble. Jake mentioned the firepower because you're talking about Lincoln being flat and how many times they might have to score. This is just going back to so 9th of December, Derby. Scored three, scored one, scored three, scored one, scored three, scored two, scored three, scored, scored three. Scored three. They, they, they are three. scoring so many goals. Yeah. Like It's rare that they're not scoring three goals I in feel a game. Like, I feel like we're like convinced we here. Get them in. I feel like we're talking ourselves and convincing us more on a selection we're already convinced by. Yes! Third selection. Sounds good to me. I think after all this, we've finally settled on one, and I feel like there's some games here that I'm I'm amazed that we haven't discussed yet, so I feel like there's going to be a couple that are going to make up what looks like a pretty tasty fivefold. So the third selection then on this week's ACA, we are taking Derby for an away win at Lincoln. That joins MK Dons and Peterborough for what is a treble that's around that 5-2 to two marker. We've locked in Peterborough, we've locked in MK Dons, we've locked in Derby. I don't know why I keep looking at my laptop because I've literally just spoke about it. It's all fresh in my mind. Um, ooh. Should we just oppose Troy Deeney's Forest Green every week? This is my proposal when they're away from home. I don't think they're terrible, but it's clearly not going very well. And this week they go to Gillingham, who, back on track, following a managerial change and Clements coming in and side who again are in that playoff mix and I think they could actually sneak in late on Gillingham 4-5, to 5-6 five, five to around that marker to beat Forest Green at home this seems straightforward to me and I'm surprised it's taken us this long to get to this game Jake I know you've got some stuff to say about Gillingham do you want to say that just while I'm pulling up exactly what Troy Deeney said I've got that down or, um, oh go for it mate yeah, yeah. some of it is absolutely this is insane. why I was like I want. I know I know this is going to be brought up <laughs> so I want to leave it to you to go for <laughs> I know how much you're going to enjoy this so we actually said after the Harrogate defeat I'd rather watch Antiques Roadshow than Forest Green uh, and that there are too many babies in his squad. The Antiques Roadshow line yeah wow. and he publicly called out his defender um, Fank T Fankati Dabo as awful. Easy for you to say. What, what, yeah. what do you say fuck Antique Roadshow for? The great <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then he came out afterwards uh, later in the week and doubled down by saying the following, I don't apologise for what I said. I apologise it was said in public. So he would have still given him the same dressing down but just in... in it's, oh, yeah. He did apologise for what he said. Oh, he did, yeah. Then he did. It. Then he did in the He's end. All over the gaff, isn't yeah, he? All over the gaff. He's lost it. I think obviously L-Troy. someone must have had a bit of a word and said, "Look, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm doing this. <laughs> on, no. This is not right." Also, what is he even doing punditry for? Because he he was on punditry on the Sunday. They had a game on Tuesday. It's what's his name? It was. Uh... What's going on? Oh, who was it? His team were absolutely awful, and then on Jimmy Floyd Asselbank. The team would be absolutely terrible. They'd be on Super Sunday going, "Ha ha! This is life. Life's great, <laughs> isn't it?" <laughs> He said, he said worse stuff about, because uh, Darbo, he said, because um, remember, he missed the pen for Coventry in the shootout in the championship playoff final last year. And he said he's gone from being one kick away from a Premier League yeah. player, and now he looks like he's kicking the ball with his shin pads. Um, so he wouldn't even get a, a tee, And he wouldn't get a game in the National yeah. League. And like, how are they going to play for him now? It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a it's a bold move. That's for yeah. Sure. <laughs> They've got to look at themselves and think, why are they playing for a team in League Two? But for loads of those lads, it'll be they'll have done well to play in League Two. He's he's thinking that they're all Troy Deeney. Yeah. He's, he's totally lost it. And just to this is going in. I feel like Gillingham's going in as a pick, but it is not all about Forest Green. This is an improving Gillingham side who have got, I believe, ten points in the last. Five games from 15. This is an improving side as well. We're not just going, oh, Forest Green, <laughs> look how crazy they are. It's a legitimate selection in the terms of how strong the home team is as well. Yeah, they've, they've won the last three, um, including away at Accrington, which is a tough place to go. Won seven of 13 at home. Um, and interestingly, I know you, at the start of the season, if you remember, was talking about Gillingham from an underlying data perspective, overperforming. But their underlying data has actually caught up with the performance. They've actually improved since Stephen Clemens has took over. Their eighth best home team on the XG, which is another promising sign. And yeah, the other I thing just, with Forest I just Green... I just want one nils... 
That's fine. And Neil Harris every time. They won't want Neil Harris. went, Shabba, we've won. Uh, the, the, the interesting <laughs> My thing work with, here is done. <laughs> Morris Green, as we talk about the Deeney and, and the effect that has, they've got a real disciplinary problem at the minute as well. Like they've had three red cards in the last five. And if you include Deeney getting sent off himself against Swindon, that's four in the last five. Like, I do signed on Friday, got sent off on the Saturday, didn't he? Yeah. The most recent game, I think. So th that's something else to factor in when you look, yeah. look, talk about Forrest Green. Gillingham, good. Forrest Green, bad. They're not even short, though, are That's they? That's a lovely summary. Four to That's five. all I need. One team good, one team bad. This feels like the fourth selection it of this week's Acker is Gillingham. For a home win over Forest Green, joining Derby to beat Lincoln, MK Dons to beat Morecambe, and Peterborough to beat Shrewsbury. The only problem we've got is we're still around the five, five and a half, six to one-ish marker, so I need one more selection. I know we, we chatted about this uh, last week, about... Uh, Blackpool, they didn't get in, unfortunately. Um, not that I'm bitter about it. Jesus. Um, but actually thinking about work, eh? thinking about opposing Blackpool this week because they're so good at home. Um, when uh, Tom and I did the our quick fire acker on Monday, where we were going through the tips for the the midweek games, which you can you'll get some weeks. It's only ten minutes long. So it's a quick fire podcast, sorry, not quick fire acker. Then um, we're saying Blackpool have got a chance here at home against Forest in the FA Cup because they're so good at home. They are dire away. And they go to Bristol Rovers, who have really improved uh, since Matt Taylor took over. Um, they gave Barnsley a really good test last weekend in the second half, uh, made a good fist of it, and ended up losing 2-1. And uh, Bristol Rovers, are, I think they were 33-20. Uh, when I looked this morning, so I really like it as a yeah, still getting around eight to five. I think. Yeah, big priced pick, and um, Matt Brocklebank, one of our uh, racing experts, was chatting to him about this. And interestingly, he lives just up the road from me. I've told a couple of you lads about this. Cutting it a bit fast. We actually the in use of interest in there. We actually <laughs> need to put a um, put an appeal out because there's been some sort of prank going on around our uh, village of someone just throwing dog shit everywhere. So walked. Um, what is it with this podcast? My kid, team, I know it's shit, mate. Jesus Christ. Need something else next week. Walk into school, nine piles of dog shit in um, a half a mile walk. Walked to the pub, uh, stepped in a pile of dog shit. Whee! For Christmas, <laughs> literally not a pile. So anybody who sees somebody in Leeds not picking up shit feels like a confession. <laughs> is this also, kind of someone and then saying in a public space podcast. Don't, one also don't own a dog. Oh, oh, oh. Nine piles of shit on the short walk to school. Oh, Has this dog on. got irritable bowels in there? Right. Like Nine a piles is like insane. a war zone, mate. The more important thing to me is Bristol Rovers <laughs> to be Blackpool to mm. try and get us back on track. I like it. I said I'd acker freeze it because I think Bristol Rovers, although a small sample size against possession based football teams in League One. They have done well. They have beaten uh, Bolton. They've beaten Charlton. They've beaten Portsmouth. They beat Crew in the FA Cup as well. I know there's a bit of a, a difference in leagues there. It's a nice price. And what I will check out was if you chucked it with the four teams that we have currently of... Bah, 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 I've lost one. Peterborough, um, MK Dons, Derby, and was it Gillingham that we settled on? Uh, that was... I've lost all track of everything, but that would be around 16 to 1 marker on that one. Yeah, oh. <clears throat> my only I guess, concern with Bristol Rovers is that they've had that initial uptick with a new manager. And I just wonder if other teams have started figuring them out a little bit um, and will be able to combat what they do. And I, I, I get Joe's point about Blackpool's away form because it is literally, yeah, it is it's terrible. Um, they are completely untrustworthy away from home. Um, but yeah, I just wonder if there's some something else better out there. Um, and I'm looking at Cheltenham uh, at home to... Carlisle. I'm going to instantly dismiss. Oh, instantly. Go on. Dismiss Not instantly. It. I'm going to let. Oh, uh, no, dismiss just, it. Just dismiss it. I will tell you for why. No, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you for why. I'll tell you for why. Uh, Cheltenham were. What price are they now? 13 to 10. They were 13 to 10 yesterday. And when I was doing this and I looked, because, you know, I'm a big fan of Cheltenham and how they're going. Big thought, fun. brilliant. This is going well. Fine. 13 to 10. And an open Twitter.com. And the news, Will Goodwin's going to Oxford, £400,000. Their striker, who is their target man in this team, has really, really benefited. I don't know if the move makes sense in terms of the player and the system that he's going to, but since, you know, the, he's really kind of come into his own, had a role, scored goals, they have then lost that focal point. And my note on that was that check the price. Is it then value if it drifts further? 
on the back of this, but it's going the other way. It's shortening despite the news, unless something's changed, and maybe I've completely missed this, that their main striker, the target man within this direct system, who everyone else has then built around and benefited from, has gone. I don't quite understand. It's a good enough argument for me to leave it. And then also, Jimmy's seen uh, Barnsley play Carlisle on Tuesday. That game's played another nine times out of ten. They win that game by two or three goals. Are we putting it in? Barnsley or Carlisle? Carlisle. Are we putting this in if Carlisle have just won by a couple at Barnsley? Who scored for Barnsley? Oh, oh uh, Tom, that would be Devante Cole, actually. <laughs> oh, wonder, you know what, I haven't seen the goal, so if only there was some way I could find out about how that goal was scored. Play three up front, maybe just take Shepard off, just have a flat back four, and take the game to the visitors. Jordan Williams is doing just that now as he gallops over the halfway line, plays a moving pass, he's a goal! Cole drills it across the box, finds the bottom corner, queuing the pyrotechnics. It was Jordan Williams galloping in to the Carlisle half, played a lovely crossfield pass to Cole, and Cole equaling Alfie May's total of 16 goals with a crisp, crisp finish, sparking the Reds into life. Set. I'm not a gambling man, but a, a certain tipster on social media was telling me to put my money on uh, Devante Cole to score tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what well, a what did you <laughs> What an absolute <laughs> genius. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. <laughs> I was a very own Jimmy now. I'm very conscious of time and wrapping up, but hey, the kid's got it. The kid's got it on the old commentary. Not bad. Not for anything this look guy at can't no, do. Look at him. Shovel shit. He's throw it at the wall. Washing. What happened if that game was on a Wednesday? Oh, I'm busy, I'm afraid. <laughs> All right. I've got a lot of poo to attend to. But yeah, just off the back of what Joe was saying, Carlisle was must have uh, so nominal. He doesn't want to talk about it. I don't, enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it. Seriously, no. No, Carlisle were phenomenal. They, they had a clear game plan and they executed that to a man to perfection should have scored four and I'm not well, just not talking. to perfection I mean they lost 2-1 no it was uh, it was very harsh defeat Cole wonderfully taken goal and it was a penalty so the more the more I look at this the more I've kind of to leave it alone, yeah. made notes on the games that we've discussed with MK Dons Peterborough Gillingham Derby four teams that I really like Warsaw were mentioned to be Accrington two people on the podcast are really keen on this Two of us didn't particularly have an opinion, but I'd have I, I I'd go with this. Before really, it, it was just one that I had other games that I didn't go for. So just just like explain it like you're explaining it to a kid, just like five years old, three bullet points. Why this will go in? Why it's going in? Why this should go in? Because the more I look at it, the more I think this is this is the one. Uh, producer, can you rewind to when I talked about it last time, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, basically, Walsall really strong at home. They've had bullet three, point one. Three good wins against Tranmere, Crew, and Wrexham back to back. Two point two, and Accrington they're winless in five on the travels, and they're missing a lot of key players. That you can't oh. don't even need three. Wow! Yes, you're good. You've got him. You're good. What I will say with that uh, accumulator of those five teams that I just mentioned, then I'll recap shortly if we agree on it. That's eleven and a half to one ish, twelve to one, depending where you go. Pre boost. Pre boost. boost. It's the line on the boost. <laughs> Are we all happy with this? Oh, we're gonna I think we've yeah. settled on a nice five there of the so tasteful we we're gonna boost so and we're gonna boost the shit out of that yeah. that's gonna oh yeah i think we're after plenty of discussion plenty of back and forth and losing complete direction of where we are what's going on i think we finally settled on the five that we want yes for this week's acker then we have got five teams from the Skybet EFL to go for, and I've done them in a jumbled up order, so the chronological side of it's going out the window. But we are taking Derby for an away win at Lincoln. We've got Peterborough to beat Shrewsbury, and then three from League Two. We've got Gillingham to beat Forest Green. We've got MK Dons to beat Morecambe, and we've got Warsaw to beat Accrington. Pre-boost, pre-boost at a price <laughs> of around 11.5 to 1. And as we say every single week, to remember to keep it fun. Never bet more than you can afford. Please gamble responsibly. And make sure you get in touch with us on social media then. We've read out some of the comments. We want more of them so we can get involved with them on our YouTube channel, on uh, Sporting Live football social media channels as well. And remember to head over to sportinglive.com forward slash football Friday afternoon to get that link to back it at an enhanced price. You're going to get in trouble if you don't tell people to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Oh, but can I get to the bit, subscribe. please? And if you haven't already... Please follow, rate, subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or your chosen podcast provider. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's midweek games next week, so we'll be back in the studio yes. on Monday. Exciting. I will see how Sunday Club goes. <laughs> <laughs>